What's going on guys? Welcome back to This Is The Police. In the previous part, we got hit, hit in the head. We slipped into a coma. We were in a coma for almost a month. And this is the first uh, day back on the job. So the newspapers are all about my coma. That's pretty nice. At least the city cares. And this is my new car. Isn't that cool? I didn't even realize that. Uh, my dog died yesterday. No. My friend just crashed into someone's car at an intersection. No. You stay, you stay here, you idiot. Uh, Alright, so we do have... Who's this? Platonic? I don't remember hiring you. I guess some... Some people changed or something because we were gone for a while. Alright, I'm gonna give Yancey another stripe. He's been doing a real good job and he's earned it. So let's see what's changed. Like, am I actually out of money completely? Apparently we use cassettes now. That's actually kind of cool, like... At some point in the game, I'm just gonna change uh, stuff around. Alright, let's see. Alright, so I'm gonna share that with my staff. Uh, Alright, so one thing... Jack, while you were in the hospital, a hunt was declared on all cops. It's like all the criminals in the city suddenly went savage. They're cornering officers one by one and beating them to death. Our boys have started refusing to ride out on calls alone. When the situation is really bad, even two will refuse to go. See, that's actually alright, because I... I try and uh, do a good job with that already. So I actually have in front of me all the possible or the solutions to um, let's see was this the ho no this is the wrong case I'm looking at. Oh that's bad. Alright homicide I have that one. So here's the funny thing we actually do not have all frames. We stopped getting frames but this is the solution is not in here. I'm seeing that now, like, uh, this one, this one's not in there. I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm looking at the frames in the guide. This one's in there, this one's right over there. So, basically all the correct frames are missing because, okay, this one's supposed to be there, that does make sense. This is the only, these are the only two frames that are actually right, so... I guess there's something wrong with these. Maybe get some new detectives on the case or something. Let's try changing something around maybe. Alright, so Armstrong and then get Cheryl on there. Right, and then we get Armstrong to take on this case. I don't know what's going on. It could be bugged. Could be something else, I really don't know. So we can request some more stuff from City Hall. I'm gonna ask for a raise and one more detective then. And we can hire two more people. So we actually have some decent uh, ones available. Both shifts are equal, so I'm gonna hire you for shift, let's see. Yeah, it's gonna have to be shift B to balance it out. And you are gonna be hired for shift A. Look at this guy, he looks real mean. Whoa, what the hell? That's just, uh, that's the guy. That's, uh, that's, that's the, the guy. Hulk Hogan. There we go. I was a little worried that I was gonna actually forget Hulk Hogan's name. Anyway, a passerby saw three teenagers setting fire to a parked car. According to an eyewitness, you can still catch them. They're just walking down the street, not even in a hurry. I'm gonna send Davis, because he's garbage. I'm gonna send Vandal and Smith. They're just a bunch of teenagers. They probably don't have anything like guns or bombs with them or anything like that, so we should be okay. Also, we have the hit and run, obviously, but I don't think we can do anything with this yet. In fact, we don't have any real detectives on the case, so that kind of sucks. Let's just see if we can figure out the, uh, the other ones. I know now that the, uh, oh, drug sales. Club patrons found a man lying unconscious in the bathroom due to an apparent drug overdose, so we're gonna need to get somebody on this. Who would be a good lead? One of you. Nope, wrong button again. Alright, actually, let's get Shero to be a a lead detective here. Can't do that because he's not working today. This is just annoying. All these stupid little workarounds. Alright, let's see. Nope, wrong button again. Oh my god. You. She'll do it. Go. Can't do it. What? Why not? Alright, so we took care of this. So at least we know that cases are more dangerous now. I guess that's what they're telling me. Alright, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take every detective. 
of, of any case that I can. So like that. Surely. All right, here we go. Let's have Dev and Port be the lead. Because he's actually not even that good of a detective and we need him to be better. A security guard noticed a suspicious group of teenagers hiding things under their jackets as they walked past the checkout. When he asked them to stop, the teenagers scattered in all directions and ran out of the store in the, into the parking lot. The guard called to police and says they couldn't have gotten far. All right, so let's get Maza, Pope, and Platonic. What's up with Platonic? That's Is that the developer of this game? I honestly don't remember, but... I'm actually going to look this up on my phone. Platonic. That's got to be a developer of something. Oh, okay. It's the developer of ukulele. Okay, I, d I didn't even know that. That's kind of cool, though. All right, investigation here. I start. I'll deal with that later. Whatever. An unidentified woman says that a strange surgeon is operating without a license from the basement of her house. He hardly looks like a real doctor. He's old, maybe senile, and always seems drunk. All right, so pretty serious stuff right there. Let's try and get some experience out of it as well, though. Yeah, they took care of that. No problem. Still proud of my boy, Pope. Yeah, he's, he's come a long way. And just look at him now, the star of the force. His family is super proud. A student couldn't get into his room. It was locked from the inside and he heard muffled cries coming from within. It sounded like someone was raping my girlfriend. I am like 90% sure this is a false alarm. Because muffled uh, noises could mean literally just about anything, but just to be, you know, safe, I'm gonna send some, uh, I'm gonna send my cops out there. Whoa. A, in a dirty basement, a teetering old man is digging around inside a young man's ripped open stomach. Rush at him, call an ambulance, order him to move away. He's actually drinking right now. Call an ambulance. Get that guy to safety, man. All right, so we took care of that. That wasn't good. That's messed up. Actually, the, the perspective in that in that image was just really messed up as well. All right, let's see how we're doing here with the rape case. Again, I feel like it is a false alarm, but you gotta be safe with these things. Yep, the girlfriend was just having a special moment with her new boyfriend. That's kind of what I suspected would be happening. A nurse reports that she saw an elderly woman cut off her husband's life support system after a car accident left him in a coma for months. I know this case was hopeless, but it's still murder, the greatest sin of all. According to the nurse, the woman has blocked off the entrance to the ward. I mean, is that illegal in America? I guess, well, yeah, since the guy didn't sign anything himself, that does make sense. All right, let's just, let's send these two ladies out there. They'll take care of that. That sucks, though, because that's not like a super duper big crime. That's the kind of stuff you see in movies. Alrighty. A trucker just called in. He says a van stopped on the side of the road and three large men got out with shovels. Then someone fell to the ground out of the back of the van. I think they had his hands tied up. They hit him in the head with one of the shovels and led him into the woods. Yeah, we're going to have to deal with that really quickly, actually. Yep, we should be good. Alright, I'm actually going to send out SWAT for this, though. Because it sounds like they are murdering the shit out of someone. And that's bad, guys. In case you didn't know, murdering someone, not very good. Some would argue it's a, mo it's a morally gray area. I don't think so, though. I think it is just bad. So don't murder anybody. If you're watching my videos and you do murder people, then I don't like you. Stop watching. You know, don't, just don't do that. This is bad. Uh, the van is empty, but the engine is still warm. The area is silent and dark. I guess we just wait near the van, right? I mean, they are just going to come back. We could run into the woods, but that's stupid. And entering the forest is, well, we could do that. Just wait in ambush. Was it the... Yep, that was the right thing to do. Everybody's unharmed, although... Wouldn't they kill the guy and then go back to the van? So actually, that may have been a bad idea. An eyewitness reports that five armed men burst into a jewelry store. 
A series of gunshots followed. Then a few minutes later, a girl staggered out of the store bleeding from the stomach. She fell to the pavement unconscious. I don't have the cops available right now to deal with this, which I feel very bad about it. Obviously, but we're just going to have to let it happen. I'm not sending out only two of my officers to die. I mean, either way, that's just a bad idea. Someone probably died, though. Yep, yeah, that's... Somebody's dead. Sorry, City Hall. Please forgive me. No new frames. I don't know why. No new frames. Two new frames for the hit and run. Three for the, um, drug sales. Oh, that guy died in a terrible way. Oh my god. All right. So it looks like the old investigations are just actually not doing much, and... We do not have the frames to take care of this right now. Which is just a bummer. Especially the homicide. Like, I have the guide open in front of me, right? Because I could not figure this out. And it turns out that I just do not actually have the the right frames. I just don't have them. They're not here. This is all wrong. She, like, basically, all right. Spoilers, you know, whatever. She wasn't killed by the dude in the red sweater. She was killed by her son, who's the little kid here. Right? So, basically, like, the red guy enters the apartment. They argue. He leaves. Then she tells her kid, like, hey, stop playing your stupid video games, turns off the TV, and then he kills her because he's angry. So, it just doesn't add up. Like, it might be a bug or something, I don't know, something is wrong with this, though. And end of the day. Alrighty. So the game actually didn't change that much, which I was really hoping it would, honestly. Like, I'm enjoying the story. Impressive recovery, Mr. Boyd. I'm still not happy about how soon you're back to work. Well, not happy as your doctor. As a resident of Freeburg, I'm immensely grateful for it. Really? <laughs> Just don't tell anyone, or they'll pull my license. Well, thank you again for coming to see me at night. Oh, well, whatever you need, Mr. Boyd. Any doctor in this town would come running any hour, day or night, you can believe me. You're not suffering from headaches. It says here that you are taking painkillers after a back injury. But the prescribed dose is enough to... Uh... Dr. Krachinsky, you trust me? And, uh, sorry? Do you trust me? In what way, Mr. Boyd? You think I'm an honest and reasonable man, doctor? You're joking, Mr. Boyd. Thanks to you, my wife finally agreed to buy a house here, and we've decided to have children. Thanks to you, I'm not afraid to visit my patients at night. I think you are the most honest and reasonable person in the city, Mr. Boyd. Great. You see, Dr. Krachinsky, uh, I'm an addict. Mr. Boyd, is... Uh, is well, not a drug addict in the way you might imagine. I'm not some weak-willed junkie. Sometimes I stay clean so long that... The tablets stay locked in the barn so long they go past the expiration date. But there are less pleasant stories. You know what? Let's... I once took a whole bottle right there in the barn, passed out in my own vomit. I almost choked. I fought the convulsions, somehow managed to break four ribs. For two weeks my chest was so sore I wanted to die. But for those two weeks I kept swallowing pills. Couldn't stop. If you want, I could... I once took a dose right before a party at home. My wife, Laura, had some old friends over from college. I didn't take that many, maybe five or six pills, but it felt like I'd taken a few hundred. I passed out while I was carrying a tray of drinks. On the way down, I knocked over a set of Laura's scented candles. The house almost burned down. The repairs took a good chunk from our savings. Mr. Boyd, if you'll allow me, I just... Uh... As you can see, Doctor, I'm well aware of the seriousness of the situation and the possible consequences. But sometimes I need the pills. I don't use the word lightly. Sometimes I've got to work on cases with more energy than I've got. I can't do it without them. And I know you want me doing my job. So tomorrow, I want you to come here and bring me some tablets. Lots of tablets. Ten bottles. No, no, better fifteen. Yeah, fifteen bottles. The next three months are going to be extremely difficult, Doc. 
I would like to discuss your... Uh... You'll bring the pills, Doctor? Uh, yes, Mr. Boyd. Yes. Very good. Look, I don't want to trouble you any further. I bet your family doesn't like you running away with me at night. I bet they'd rather I was still in that coma. <laughs> Okay, that was interesting. Kind of like that doctor. It's kind of a kind of a bummer we didn't get to hear him talk a whole lot. Uh, Kevin Paulson preparing to take helm at P FPD. Rumor: Kevin Paulson next year police chief. Blah blah blah. Kevin Paulson. Uh, obviously, we don't like that guy from from what we saw earlier. Start of the day. It's kind of the same, like, all the time. If it really does go up to 180 days, I'm gonna get kind of bored, honestly. All right, share it. Sweet, got a raise, that's pretty good. We can hire one more detective. Cynthia Ames, I'm gonna hire you for shift A. That's pretty good, okay. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna see if the game changes a whole lot. Like, honestly, I enjoy this game, but it's really, really slow. And it's a lot of the same stuff. Two teenagers were sitting on some steps and smoking. A black man approached and asked for a cigarette. Go ask somebody else, monkey. The adolescents responded. The man grew enraged, quickly pulled out a knife, and drove it into the chest of one of the teens. According to the other teenager who meant to escape, then he took a cigarette, quietly sat down on the steps, and started smoking. That's pretty bad. Like, racism. Pretty, you know, messed up, but um, to murder someone that's racist, that's it's going a little far. It's going a bit far, especially just a kid, you know? I mean, they do know better, but to just kill someone, that's pretty bad. Morris Queen heard from a neighboring apartment a panicked female voice crowd, help, I'm being raped. Then, according to him, all was quiet for a few seconds. Then I heard something about laundry detergent and bleach, and then some music started playing. Alright, so you never know what's happening in there. Gotta check it out. Take it seriously. Maybe it's just a crazy person, and then they started talking about what they had, what they had to buy or something. I don't know. Alright, boom. Here we go. Electrician Jason... Pruitt was conducting a regular inspection at a transformer substation and found a dirty, hairy bum who pounced on him like a wild bear. The homeless man bit him pretty severely, ripping a piece of flesh from his hand. The electrician was stunned, but managed to run away from the substation, leaving him inside. We're going to take care of him. Is that, a, is that Shadow the Hedgehog right there? That's pretty cool. I mean, I don't like Sonic at all, but... Pretty cool I recognize it. Oh my god, we're not gonna make it in time. We're gonna have to deal with this bum using the worst officers I have available unless we get to make it right in time. Oh my god, it's so close. Oh, I made it. Oh, that actually worked. Oh, I had to be really quick. Okay, boom, boom. Let's get, let's get Baloney. I like, I like him for his name only. False alarm. Turns out that Mr. Queen's neighbors had just bought a new TV and were watching some horror movies at full volume. Two teenagers were laying, laying in wait for the paramedics to go for their usual coffee and then they made off with their ambulance. We literally turned away for less than a minute. Okay. We're gonna deal with that, obviously. And it shouldn't be that bad. Oh my god, are we gonna make it? Yeah, we are. Easily. Alright, so let's send Prado, Timpson, and... I, I wish I could send baloney, but I can't, so Franco will have to do. It's cleanliness day in Freeburg, which will be widely covered by the TV and media. Three employees from all city services, including police, should come out. Okay. That's pretty good. I mean, if City Hall likes me, that's very good for me. It allows me to make more money more easily. And then also, I only have to send some of the worst cops I have available. Jason Pruitt has lost consciousness and he's shaking and convulsing on the ground. There's foam coming out of his mouth. That's bad. Call the exorcist? Keep his head elevated and his airway clear. The homeless man is still hiding in the transformer structure. The entrance is smeared with blood. She let the fuse knock on the door. Open, order him to exit. 
one of these two would be best. I guess we'll just open the door, order him to exit. I mean, he's not going to kill one of my officers acting all weird. All right, here we go. Good call. We did it. I don't know if it, like, if one answer actually is, like, 100% correct and that will always solve the crime or if there's, like, um, a per certain percentage of chance with every option. Like, if you do some of the dumber stuff, you, you get a smaller increase in your sort of success chance. I wonder how it works, like, behind the scenes, really. Like, game development-wise. All right. About a dozen homeless people were sifting through a landfill for valuables and came across a case with a combination lock. While they were deciding how to split the contents, the groups began to fight. A few of them have knives. An eyewitness called the police and reports that some seem ready for a fight to the death. That's not good. Yeah, I, I wish I had more cops for this, but... I mean, I have some of my best cops available, though. We're only missing one. And we're sending the paddy wagon. We should be able to do this. Like, Prado himself should really make up for, like... He should cover for two cops, really. Because he's that good. I mean, this dude shouldn't even be a cop at this point. Like, he should be chief or something. Exotic dancer Marisa Gomez complained about a strange man in a raincoat. One of our rooms can be seen from the street. It's so we can attract customers. Customers, not perverts. This isn't the first time we chase this guy away. He comes all the time wearing a raincoat no matter the weather. And it seems like he's touching himself. I mean, sure, that's, you know, pretty gross and all that, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I'd say the massive bum fight does take um, priority here, but it looks like we took care of it. Look at that. Baloney is even better now. What a man. What a legend. It's called Bead Busters. Oh. A woman called in to complain about a car alarm. This fucking howling woke me up. I have to get up for work tomorrow. I looked out the window and saw a dark figure duck into the alley. I think there's someone trying to steal a car. I mean, we don't know for sure. And then also, I do not have the cops available to deal with this. In fact, even the, the pervert man... No, we're going to make that one. No one's trying to steal cars. The vehicle security system is too sensitive and reacts to even the slightest noise. We did it. Look at us. All right, so I'm going to send Baloney, Prado, and let's say Asano. Get her to 600. Let's arrest this pervert. The bouncer at a nightclub refused entrance to five lowlives, hinting that flip-flops and sweatpants will chase off the women. The lowlives got angry and decided to teach the bouncer some manners. A fight ensued. I'm going to see if we can get, let's see, one more. No, we're going to have to make do with four officers. I mean, they're good, though. Yeah, they're good officers. We should be okay. Let's do it, boys. A man is standing outside the window, pressing his nose against the glass and touching himself under his coat. Grab him by the arm, throw him into the, into the patrol car. Join the guy. Come on. All right, let's throw him into the patrol car. Like, that's clearly the only option that 100% confirms that you do arrest him, though. So, got to do that one. All right, so how's, how are these guys doing? Are they going to ask for backup? Because with a bit of luck, we'll actually have some backup. Let's check it out. Come on, guys. Oh, no. Franco died. Oh, that sucks. So even though nobody was harmed except the officer and the crime was solved, we still lose some... Can I fire him for being dead? Yeah, we're just going to declare him dead. All right. More story, I guess. Mr. Boyd, I'm going home. Uh, do you need anything? Oh, no, no, don't go. I need to talk to you. I won't keep you long. I just need to make one phone call and I'll be right out, okay? Of course, Mr. Boyd. <sighs> do you know what time it is? I didn't mean, uh... Well, maybe I did. Guess I'm a son of a bitch. Jack? Good Lord, Jack, I wanted to talk to you. 
was wondering if you'd call. How do you feel? I'm good, Mrs. Markham. Better than ever. The back pain is gone, the insomnia is gone, my hair is growing back, and my pathological indecisiveness seems to have run off somewhere. Jack, if you think I had anything to do with that... I'll waste no more time trying to think, Mrs. Markham. Every second counts. There's a lot to do. And one of those things is finding Laura. Jack, your tone is scaring me. Good. Turns out I have a knack for that. Scaring people. So, Mrs. Markham, I'm going to look for my wife, and if you somehow get in my way, I'll send a special squad to your house. First they'll throw your dog in the fire, then they'll arrest you for prostitution. What? What the hell? Prostitution? Sometimes it's necessary to invent charges. It's not like I can arrest you for being an unbearable bitch. Emma, I need a detective. Oh, of course, Mr. Boyd. What shift? No, 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 not one of ours. A private detective. Oh. Um... I know that when your father stole your mother's jewelry and left her, you hired a private investigator. You didn't go to the police. Uh, you know, Mr. Boyd, it was a family problem, and we felt that it would... I understand perfectly, Emma. You don't need to explain anything. I'm in a similar situation. As you might have heard, my wife left the house. She's missing, you could say. Uh, I'm not sure what you're... I know you've heard all about it. I want her found, but I don't want the department involved. Same reason you didn't. So I decided to hire your private detective. Think you can arrange it? Oh, of course, Mr. Boyd. I'll call him and arrange everything. And don't worry... He'll keep it a secret. Fine. Uh, what do you need from me? Well, just gather all the information that might be useful and put it in an envelope, bring it to me, and I'll take it to him. Good. Okay, take the day off tomorrow and get a good night's sleep. The day after tomorrow, I'll have that envelope for you. All right, so the gameplay is still very much the same, but the story at least is picking up a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep pushing on this game a bit longer. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll be back soon with more. This is the police, where hopefully we can solve some of these dumb dumb cases. Thanks for watching, guys.